Now this next hook I want to talk about is definitely going to be my favorite of the five. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, we're gonna focus on five amazing DOM based React hooks. And we're actually gonna be starting with hook number 11, which is called use script. And the reason for that is I've already covered hooks one through 10 in two previous videos. I'll link those at the end of this video and in the description for you to check out. So this very first hook I wanna cover is called use script. And there's a really simple implementation here of our script component. We're just loading in the jQuery library using this. And then we're accessing that dollar sign, which is on the window object. So we're saying window dollar sign to access jQuery. And we're just getting the width of our window. As you can see over here, it prints out 279 because that is the width of the window. And inside of our use script here, we have just a really simple hook. This hook is using this use async hook, which is a hook from the previous video. All this hook does is allow you to run some asynchronous code and it's going to give you back a response, which is going to have loading, error, and then the value of the result. In our case, we don't have a value because all we're doing is loading a script. So all we care about is, is it finished loading? And inside of here, all we're doing is creating a script element. We're putting the URL to the URL that we want to render, which is what we pass to this use script. And all we're doing down here is we're just waiting for that script to finish loading. And once it does, we make sure that we set loading to true. And then down here, we're just calling that jQuery method once it finishes loading. This is great when you need to load in any type of script after the fact. So you need to dynamically load a script, for example, for Stripe checkout, you need to do this. Or maybe, for example, you want some Google Analytics or other analytics service. Doing this use script asynchronously is so much nicer and so much easier when you only need to load a script in certain situations where you can't do it with NPM imports. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is going to be this use deep compare. So let's just come to our app.js. We're going to get that component and we're going to render that out to the page. And we're going to look at the code for this use deep compare and I'll just close out of the rest of this. So use deep compare effect works very similar to a normal use effect. But instead of comparing references, we're actually comparing the actual values of the objects being passed to it. So let's take a look at the actual component itself, which is using this hook because it's a slightly complicated component. As you can see, we have an age variable and then just a random count variable that are both set to zero. And then we have a use effect counter and a use deep compare effect counter. And all that this is doing is telling us how many times we are running these different effects. Because as you can see in our use effect, all we're doing is we're just taking our counter and we're incrementing it by one. And here we're taking our counter for our deep compare and we're incrementing it by one. So these two different use effects are use deep compare effect and use effect are just incrementing the counters right here by one. So as you can see, they both have ran one time each. Then down below, we just have some divs rendering out everything. And all that's happening is if we click increment age, it adds one to our age variable. And if we click increment other, it adds one to our other count. And the reason that this use deep compare effect is so important is because as you'll notice, if I click increment age, both my use effect and use deep compare effect are both running at the exact same time. Every time we change our age, they both run. But if I change our other count, you're going to notice our use effect is running, even though we only have this person object here and this person object only has an age inside of it. It doesn't actually care about the other count. And the reason for this issue is that use effect in React by default is comparing object references. So it's saying, hey, is this person object reference the same as the previous person object? And since this person is being defined right here inside of our function, every time our function re-renders, so every time we increment our age or our other count, it creates a brand new person variable. And this brand new person variable is different than the previous person variable because they're two different objects. So this use effect is always going to run every single time. This use deep compare effect, on the other hand, doesn't care about object references and instead is comparing the exact value of these objects. So since the value of this person object, for example, this age and name, didn't change when we increment the other count, it doesn't run this deep compare effect. And the way this code works is super simple. All we're doing is just keeping a reference to our references here. And we're just using Lodash to say, hey, are these things equal? And this is going to compare the actual values of these objects and not the objects themselves. So it's going to go around that referential equality. Normally to get around this, you would need to, you know, wrap this inside of a use memo. So you could say use memo here, wrap this entire thing inside of that. And then we could say, oh, you know what? Our dependencies are going to be our age. This would solve this issue. And now our use effect and our use deep compare effect would work exactly the same. But sometimes this is kind of a pain, especially if you have a lot of different dependencies. So using deep compare effect is an easy way to get around this issue and something that you're going to find yourself using all the time. Now, the next hook I want to talk about is going to be a lot simpler. It's a really easy one. And this one is for dealing with events. And this is called the use event listener hook. So let's just comment this back in so we can render this out. And you can see it just says last key. And all this does is when I press a key, it just tells me whatever the last key I pressed is. So I press D, you can see it renders out a D. So let's actually look at this hook real quick. We'll look at the component first. 
as you can see, it's really straightforward. We just have state to store the key and we say use event listener. We're listening for the key down event. And when this runs, we're getting the key from that event and we're setting that to the key and just rendering that out to the screen. Let's look at the use event listener hook real quick. It's also pretty straightforward. We pass in the type of event and the callback, as you can see here, key down is our event and our callback is right here. And then we have an optional third parameter, which is an element. And this is just the thing we want to use an event listener on. By default, this just renders for the window. So it's going to add the event listener to the window. But if you want it to be on a specific element, you can also pass an element in. Then all we're doing is we're just saving our callback here as a reference and updating it when it changes. This just makes sure we don't have any additional re-renders we don't need. And then our use effect, all we're saying is, hey, if our event or our element changes, re-render this. Otherwise, just come in here, create a handler, which is going to be our callback. And then we want to add an event listener for that callback and then remove it anytime that this information changes. So all we're doing is just adding an event listener to the element that we care about and removing it when we no longer need it. Super straightforward, but this is great when you need to do things like window resizing or you need to do things like key presses or mouse moves or hovers and all that additional stuff. Writing out all this code every single time is kind of a pain. So having this simple hook makes it so much easier. Now this next hook I want to talk about is definitely going to be my favorite of the five that I'm covering. And this is one called use on screen. So let's just render this out real quick and I'll show you exactly what's happening. So as you can see, we have a header. And as I scroll down, there's a bunch of text. And then we're going to have a header two. And you'll notice as soon as header two becomes enough visible on the screen, it's going to pop this text visible next to it. And what we're doing is we're checking, hey, is this thing on the screen? If so, then run some code. So if we come over here to use on screen, we'll look at the component first. You can just see we say use on screen. We pass it the reference to the thing we care about, which in our case is this header to reference. And we say when it is 100 pixels above the bottom of the screen, do something. If I change this to the 120, for example, and you can see now that that is appearing when it's 120 pixels above the bottom of the screen. And we could also change it to zero pixels. So we'll say zero whoops, pixels just like this. And now as soon as it becomes visible, it's going to have visible on it because it's now zero pixels on the screen. So it's always going to have this visible show up as soon as it shows up on the screen. We'll just change it back to negative 100 so we can see how this is working where it comes onto the screen and shows that thing. So now let's go ahead and look at the code for use on screen. And this is actually really simple. All we're doing is wrapping a use effect around an intersection observer. This is a built-in technology in the browser that allows you to see when something intersects the screen, essentially. We're saying, hey, when this element is on the screen, what we want to do is we just want to set is visible to true or false, depending on if it is far enough onto the screen. That's this root margin. By default, zero means as soon as it becomes visible, then it's going to be set as visible. Otherwise, we can change it to like a negative value, so it has to be on the screen for a while, or a positive value where it's saying, hey, when this is 100 pixels away from being visible, then we want to mark this thing to be set as true. And that's all this is doing It's just saying, is it visible? Is it not visible? And it's just returning that value down here. Super handy because this code is kind of messy. It's a little bit clunky to write every single time, but using this simple one liner is so much easier to work with. And this is something you're going to use all the time. If you have like infinite scrolling, you need to lazy load anything at all. It's super useful for all of that. And this final hook I want to talk about is another really simple one that piggybacks on some of the other hooks we've talked about. And this is called use window size. So let me just render this out to the screen real quick so we can see what we're working with. And this use window size component is just going to come right here. It just says, hey, use window size. It gives us a width and a height, and we're just rendering that to the screen. And as this window size changes, you can see it's rendering on the screen over here for the new updated size. So if we look at the component, it's also super straightforward. Remember, we already have this use event listener set up. So we just say, hey, whenever we resize our window, just set the window size to the new width and the height of our window. And we're just going to return that to the user. So we're able to piggyback on some of these other smaller hooks we created to create more complex hooks. And that's the beauty of all these really simple hooks. You can just kind of mix and match them together to create really complex logic by using just a small little pieces of hooks at a time. And I absolutely love that. If you enjoyed this video, you definitely need to check out part one and two linked over here. That's going to cover 10 more amazing custom React hooks. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.